Welcome to Two by Tuesday, where every second Tuesday I answer a question using the power of a two by two matrix. Today the question is, how responsive are you? How responsive is your business? Look, I'm not telling you anything new when we know how insane all these changes are happening right now. And really responsiveness is being able to listen, recognize, perhaps forecast ahead and decide how do I position myself? How do I position my business? to meet these changes, to use them to my advantage. So really there's a question around strategy and often working with companies in the past, strategy is something that just was not responsive at all. You have these massive, long, lengthy conversations to get some type of consensus, then it's agreed upon. Then by the time the strategy is rolled out to the business, with the change that's happening right now, it's already obsolete. So you need a strategy and way of thinking around the world that can help position yourself and your business to really be responsive and to take advantage of what is happening at the moment in terms of being a disruptor, using the volatility to your advantage and being fast, being speedy and agile enough to meet those demands. What I'm sharing with you is a process that I go through with clients and it's Alan Weiss's sentient strategy. Here's a bit of a highlight of what we cover in this. This is just the first part of it, really thinking about where does your company sit? Really the essence of this is answering two questions. Do you know where you are and do you know what you're doing. So to kick this off, we'll look at the Y axis and that is the awareness of the environment. How aware are you of the environment in which you're operating in? At the top here, we have high awareness and down the bottom, we have low awareness of the environment. You're not really sure of what's going on. On the X axis, we have consciousness of actions. Are you aware that when you take an action, you know what potential impact it might have in the environment that you're operating in. We don't work in isolation. We work as part of a system. So how aware are you? How aware is your business of decisions and actions that can impact the environment that you're playing in? On the right here, we have high consciousness of the impact of those decisions. And on the left here, we have low consciousness of one's actions. Now with environment, we can only really take this as a snapshot of time. I'm sharing this with you in August of 2022. What's interesting about the examples that I share is that over time, they may shift and move around the grid, much like yourself as well is very dynamic. Up the top right, we've got companies here that we look to for sources of inspiration. We think, gosh, they're predicting these trends. They're moving with the waves. They're very in tune with what their clients are after and what the markets are doing as well. Amazon is a very clear example here, just the speed of which they deliver, recognizing that people want that, that people are time poor and using the technology like automation to, to run their warehouses and things like that. Apple is another example. I want to move away from these two sort of big ones, but even thinking at a level like emergency response team, what they do is they go to an emergency site, they very quickly assess what's going on around them and make a decision on how to act next. At a micro level even, I think if you go to a bar, it's really busy, there's one bartender there, but they're moving things around, they see you, they know that it's busy, they acknowledge to you, the customer, that things are busy, they'll get to you. That is worth so much in terms of responsiveness. On the bottom left here, I'm actually going to put an entire industry down here and that is the education industry. It's a tough one because it's really built on the industrial revolution style of work, which is we create people for roles where they have to sit there for eight hours a day, which is not the case anymore. And I don't think education has even evolved to provide relevant curriculum for school students in the way that it's set up in the programs that are taught. I think it's quite backward and absolutely needs some disruption. In the top left, one of my favorite companies used to be Qantas and maybe it's making headway, but for the last six months, I'm part of a frequent Flyers Facebook group. They've got Qantas Platinum members on there that have just been treated horrendously, had not been contacted. It's been awful. I mean, that's reflected in, I think, the $1.6 billion loss. Now, Alan Joyce has stepped up and started apologizing, but that needed to happen a while ago. I think there needs to be more responsiveness. I think they try to do things internally, but as a consumer looking in, hearing people that are completely loyal that have now just said they're never flying Qantas again, I don't know how long that will last. But for a moment in time, Qantas has been the top left, which is so sad to see. What they've started considering now, which will hopefully move them along, is they've been reconnecting with their frequent flyers, offering them discounts and status renewals and things like that to hopefully bring them back. But a lot of damage has been done because they haven't been completely conscious or maybe they have, but just haven't decided to take action on that. On the bottom right, we have high consciousness in terms of what the actions that I take teamed with low awareness of what's actually happening in the market. So another brand that I love that I will put down here is Peloton. I think like most of the companies that did it really well as a result of the pandemic, when everyone was now working from home, they overestimated, overcalculated the demand for their products that would happen as people emerge from the pandemic. And Peloton has been an example of this. They really do have high consciousness of their actions, what they do for their communities. They're very in tune with their clients. 
with the market that they serve. But I feel like in terms of the market, they have overestimated, much like a lot of the tech companies we see now, like Spotify, Netflix, Shopify. And now as a result, they've had numerous layoffs, huge layoffs across the tech sector recently. In terms of like a local example that we can latch onto, there are two cafes that I walk past when I have my dogs. And the one cafe that I go to, I go there because they have a point of sale that is outside the cafe. So I can walk up to it. The dogs are there. I don't have to like tie my dogs up. I can just go to this cafe and order my coffee. But the other cafe, I prefer their coffee, but to get into their cafe creates a lot of friction. I just wish that they would look outside and just see that they're losing all the sale from coffees because people with dogs are going to the other one. All they need to do is just get their FPOS register, walk outside and take orders. That is an example of if you've got a business and you're in one of these different areas, what can you do to, to either re-engage and be more aware of what's happening in your market? And things like listening to was are really great for that. Talking to your clients, reading. I think one guy, Gary V, I think he does an extremely great job of keeping front of mind by constantly listening. And he says that he looks at trends, he looks at patterns, and then he figures out what actions he can take then to best suit the need of his market in terms of his content strategy. So that's it. Just a few quick examples for you about how do you create a responsive strategy for yourself and for your business. This is my sentient strategy approach, and it's a really great way of rapidly hitting companies' visions, really showing what the priorities are and thinking about what needs to be done in order to meet the vision 12 months from now. Thanks for listening to Two by Tuesday. Chat to you next time.